11 2012 Common Council, and as is customary, our city clerk Sue Richards will read her quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. Being able to move forward in life is a true test of a person's maturity level and a true test of the confidence that they have within themselves. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Belt? Here. Warren? Here. Carlson? Here. Decker? Here. Hammond? Excused. Hammond? Here. Heidemann? Here. Koth? Here. Kittleson? Here. Matichuk? Here. Raisler? Here. Samson? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. And Versi? Here. 14 eyes. We have a quorum. Now if we can all join Alderperson Kittleson in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jean. Looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting, President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes from the previous council meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the previous minutes <clears throat> under discussion. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Resignations. Attorney McLean. Yes, uh, an email from former Alderperson Rinfleisch to the city clerk um, on October 12th advising that uh, he was resigning his aldermanic position effective October 14th because he, uh, starting today, I guess, serving as administrator, clerk, treasurer in the village of Edgar, Wisconsin, and he'd be ineligible for the office of Alderperson as he will no longer be a resident here. Thank you, Attorney McLean, and I'd like to thank Former Alderman Rinfleisch for his many years of service to the city and wish him the best in his future endeavors uh, pursuing the, his uh, chosen field of study. So I'm sure we all appreciate his service. Any further resignations? Okay. Uh, we need a motion to accept President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resignation be accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion to, and a second to Accept and place on file under discussion. If there is no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Public forum. Sue? <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you. Um, first this evening we have Milt Storm. Mel, can you get in there? Can I have your home address, please, Mel? Yes, it's 1736 Marvin Court, and that's in Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I want to thank Mayor Ryan for this opportunity to again speak to the Common Council. I have the gut feeling that some citizens may be offended by my using up valuable time at these public forums. My concern is in regard to the threatening and vicious communications that I have received and also the mayor, the mayor Ryan this past week through the mail. I've been reviewing these types of letters when the former, on, receiving these types of letters when the former Honorable Mayor Juan Perez was a, elected. I am not a lawyer, although I studied law. My identical twin brother has two sons who are attorneys and practice law in DuPage County, Illinois. After I spoke on Monday's council meeting two weeks ago, I again received a vicious, threatening letter through the mail. This is about the fourth one that I have received thus far, so now I am moving into action. In the county clerk's office, there is five law books on a table. In volume five of the Wisconsin statute, page 781, I found a certain a section on disorderly conduct. So I've titled it as this, my thesis as Disorderly Conduct versus Point of Order. It states the, the disorderly conduct does not necessarily require disruption that implicates the public directly. This section encompasses conduct that tends to come, cause a disturbance or disruption that is personal or private in nature, as long as there exists the real possibility that the disruption will spill over and disrupt the peace, order, and safety of the surrounding community. Sending repeated 
unwelcome and anonymous letters and presented, I can't even read my own writing, and possibly are mailings that are considered disorderly conduct and are punishable by law. So is it the mayor to blame for his conduct of personal time, or is it Patrick Gillette, Mary Jo Title, recall wannabes capable of the Sheboygan and culpability of the Sheboygan Fest and its editorial page of lies and innuendos. As it is my speaking at public forum, I did inform Alderman Bursey of some of the threatening letters that I have gotten. And I may implicate, and I don't only speculate, but I think I have good evidence that it involves the mayor, former mayor, his sons, previous older persons, not on this council, and I may implicate others. I am the mayor that I have, oh, I'm asking the mayor that if I can read a letter that I received from my brother-in-law. It's entitled, God Loves the Drunk People Too. I don't have a problem with that. You don't mind? Okay. God loves drunk people too. A man and his wife were awakened at 3 a.m. by a loud pounding on the door. The man gets up and goes to the door where a drunken stranger standing in the pouring rain is asking for a push. Not a chance, says the husband. It's three in the morning. He slams the door and returns to bed. Who was that, his, asked his wife. Just some drunk guy asking for a push, he answers. Did you help him, she asked. No, I did not. It is three in the morning and it's pouring rain out there. Well, you sure have a short memory, says his wife. Can't you remember about three months ago we broke down and those two guys helped us? I think you should help him and you should be ashamed of yourself. God loves drunk people too. The man does as he is told, gets dressed and goes out into the pounding rain. He calls out in the dark, hello, are you still out there? Yes, comes back the answer. Do you still need a push, calls out the husband? Yes, please, comes the reply from the dark. Where are you, asks the husband. Over here on the swing set, he says. <laughs> I just uh, met and spoke to Adam Payne this past week as I attended the finance committee meeting at the county board. And he asked me if I was speaking on the wellness program, so he must be listening. So if Mr. Payne is listening, this is for him and his request. It is the wellness of your spirit and your soul that determines the wellness of your mind and its reasoning and its thinking. And it may even improve the wellness of the strength and health of your body. Thank you again for listening. Thank you, Milton. Thank you, Milton. It's my goal to always stay off of swing sets at 3 a.m. Thanks. Next. Joanne Scribner, please. Joanne, can I have your home address? Three Seneca Trail. Okay, and you will have five minutes. First of all, thank you, Mayor Ryan and Sheboygan Common Council for the opportunity to speak to you again tonight. First of all, I'd like to read from the United States Constitution, the 18th Amendment. After one year from the ratification of this article, the manufacture, sale, or transportation of intoxicating liquors within the importation thereof into or the exportation thereof from the United States and all territory subject to the jurisdiction thereof for beverage purposes is hereby prohibited. That 18th Amendment was ratified January 16, 1919. It was then repealed by the 21st Amendment on December 5th, 1933. That amendment reads, the 18th Article of Amendment to the Constitution of the United States is hereby repealed. I believe it is time for the 21st Amendment to be repealed and for the 18th Amendment to again be in place. Yes, I believe in prohibition. Why, you may ask, there are many good reasons to prohibit the use, manufacture, sale, and transportation, importation, and exportation of intoxicating liquors in our country, our state, and in our city of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. No more highway deaths or city street deaths caused by drivers who are drinking too much alcohol. 
No more bar fights. No more people being killed in bar fights, as in Plymouth Racers Hall. No more alcohol to fuel these arguments and bar fights. Not as many diseases that are caused by the intake of alcohol. Not as many people ending up in divorce court because of too much alcohol use by one spouse or the other, or both. Not as many underage drinkers getting arrested at underage drinking parties or being killed in car accidents because of alcohol use. Not as many physically, verbally, and emotionally abused children, or wives, or husbands, because of alcohol use. The money spent on alcohol could go to much better purposes, like paying the rent, or the mortgage, or for groceries and clothes, or for college education, or for church and charity work. Daryl Gum, in his letter to the editor in the, Feb in the Friday, August 5th, 2011, Sheboygan Press, uh, his, his, his letter was titled, We Live in an Alcohol-Enabling Culture. How true. Every football game, baseball game, golf game, auto race, soccer game, etc., on TV, always has to be sponsored by some beer commercial. I think it is time for the beer and alcohol commercials to be banned from TV as the cigarette commercials were in the past. It could happen, and I hope it does. Every 21-year-old feels it is a rite of passage to become an adult by drinking beer or alcohol. Some kids think it is cool to drink alcohol. Start thinking cold, like a cold, dead body on a cold slab in a cold morgue. Here's what God says about alcohol in his word. In Proverbs chapter 20, verses 19 through 21, God says, <clears throat> Make sure I have the right ones here. Proverbs 20, verse 1. I'm sorry. Proverbs 20, verse 1. Wine is a mocker and beer a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. And then Proverbs 23, verses 19 through 21. Listen, my son, and be wise, and keep your heart on the right path. Do not join those who drink too much wine or gorge themselves on meat, for drunkards and gluttons become poor, and drowsiness clothes them in rags. And verses 29 through 35. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has Excuse needless me, bruises? Would you like your additional minute? Yes. To grant the additional Second. minute. <clears throat> Who has needless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Those who linger over wine, who go to sample bowls of mixed wine. Do not gaze at wine when it, is, when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Your eyes will see strange sights and your mind imagine confusing things. You will be like one sleeping on the high seas, lying on top of the rigging. They hit me, you will say, but I'm not hurt. They beat me, but I don't feel it. When will I wake up so I can find another drink? So for someone to want to have a retail alcohol store at the former Aurora Pharmacy on South 12th and Wilson, right next to the South High and the Early Learning Center, is, in my opinion, a very, very bad idea. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Joanne. Next. That would be it. Okay, that is all for public forum. Uh, now we have our tourism presentation uh, presented by Amy Wilson and George Tuig of the Chamber Department of Tourism, sponsored by the city. Amy and George. Uh <clears throat> 
<coughs> okay. <laughs> it's been three months already. Oh, yeah. Okay. The, um, the packets that you have follow this. Every slide is in it. So if you can't see this, just follow along in the packet. Um, what we're going to review today, the first part of this will be a little bit of um, recap for you, some of the numbers for May, which still stand. Then we'll kind of go into the uh, 2012 budget and then talk a little bit about the campaigns that we've been using throughout 2012 and the reasons why we plan to use or not use some of them next year. Oh, you starting me? <laughs> All right. Okay. So in 2010, if you remember, Sheboygan County maintained its ninth position ranked in tourism destination in the state and its fourth position among the counties along the lakeshore of Lake Michigan. And this is just a recap. You can see our ninth position in the state in the red. Um, we had the highest increase year over year from 2009. These numbers were just released in May, by the way, in May 2011. We don't get them till the next year. Um, so we had the highest increase. Um, and the top nine counties in the state. You can see, just as a recap, all of these counties in yellow offer gaming. So we're holding very well next to the gaming counties in position two. And among the counties along the uh, lakeshore, Sheboygan ranks number four. Again, we had the highest increase over 2009 of all of the counties up and down the lakeshore, including Brown County. And in 2010, the county gained half a market share point with an increase of almost 17 million in traveler expenditures. So you can see the state total of tourism traveler expenditures is 12.3 billion. The average among each county in the state is 170 million. One market share point statewide is worth 123 million. Along the I-43 counties, um, though all of those counties, including Brown County, capture 3.4 billion or 28% of the state's total in traveler expenditures. Those counties, the average of just the counties along the lakeshore because they travel so much of the total, average about 388 million. We were at about 294. Um, and one market share point there is worth almost 35 million, over 34.9 million, and we captured almost 17 million, so about half a market share point in 2010. In August 2011, Sheboygan Tourism surveyed the performance of five of Sheboygan's top performing hotels. And some here's the, the key results are between January 1st and July 10th, we did do the survey after the 4th of July weekend, so that's why these numbers cut off right after our, the peak of our mid-season. January 1st through July 10th, the hotels collectively realized a 3% increase in occupancy over last year. Between May 27th and July 10th, May 27th being Memorial Day weekend, the hotels collectively experienced a 4% decrease in occupancy over last year, and we'll talk about why as we move through. January 1st through September, the hotels are projecting a 2% increase over the same period last year, and a 2% increase over the same period last year through December. So the key findings that we learned from the hotels is that corporate and group bookings are down. Leisure travel is on the rise and it's continuing to grow. Room rates are reported to be flat or up over last year. Average daily rate is up slightly. And the findings are right in line with the research commissioned by the Wisconsin State Department of Tourism. So these findings follow a statewide wide trend and actually they follow a nationwide trend right now. So conclusions are that between May 27th through July 10th, we went back and looked. Why that decrease? Well, the re weather records indicated that 24 out of 45 days, or 53% of that time coming into the very beginning of our peak season, it rained 53% of the time. So charter fishing was down coming into spring. Everyone remembers the gray, wet, colder spring. That really has an effect on hotel stays and activities <coughs> in the county. Um, a more robust increase in leisure business will simultaneously make up for a decrease in corporate stays and as higher seasonal rates kick in, ADR will ultimately reach a net gain resulting in an overall increase in room tax collected and that's exactly what happened. Corporate and group rates tend to be higher, or lower, I'm sorry, lower room rates but with more rooms per year and when that business goes down, once higher leisure room rates kick in, it helps make up that, that decrease, and that's what we saw. So 
we do know that the increase in leisure travel really helped with those down periods. So in 2011, the city of Sheboygan realized a 14% increase in room tax collected in calendar quarter one and a 10% increase in room tax collected in calendar quarter two. In calendar quarter three, the city of Sheboygan is projected to realize as much as a 12% increase and we're projected to remain flat through calendar quarter four, of course, through the winter months. So historically, Sheboygan has captured about 70% of its total room tax during quarters two and three, and these are calendar quarters two and three, or the months of April through September. However, consumer behavior is changing. With the largest increase in travel occurring in tourism quarter four, marketing initiatives will mainly target the months of April through October. Now you can see the quarters over here, December through February, the coldest, least traveled winter months are tourism quarter one. But that correlates more to a calendar or budget quarter four. So this can get a little bit confusing. But the, the best way to know is that our season doesn't really kick in until about spring break and then we see a little lull kicks in really starting Memorial Day, depending on weather. And then as we can see, our tourism quarter four, which is September through November, that shoulder season had the highest increase of the whole year. It's a stronger shoulder season than the spring months. So statewide leisure traveler expenditures are increasing and annually 71% of travelers do so for pleasure. 18% do so for business, and 11% travel for meetings and conventions. And this is the most recent data, and it is right in line with our other research and real-time feedback that we're getting. So we, again, group and corporate travel is down, leisure travels up. So we we're focusing on leisure travelers, which is where the um, tourism initiatives put most of their marketing dollars, almost all of them, actually. So what are they spending their money on when they come here? Um, this is a little bit difficult to see but on the, on the slide, but I believe it's in blue. Yeah, in blue, the items in, your, in blue, which is, oh, I can't even see it on here. Let me flip to that page. Can you see it? Yeah, it's fine. Yes. Let's see. It's, this is actually pretty interesting because um, this is completely different than what we've seen last year as the economy starts to recover. So consumers are spending more on food, recreation, historic experiences, sightseeing, and event fees. They're spending less on shopping, sports fees, evening entertainment, and wagering. So what this tells us is this actually, Sheboygan is positioned very well with the, the new activities that are trending because people are spending more money on activities that they can actually engage in themselves rather than paying to have that experience come back at them like a sporting event or what might be considered a luxury entertainment like wagering. So bike trails, outdoor, our waterfront, all of those are right in line with this research, so we're well positioned right now. The number one key to Sheboygan's tourism marketing strategy is, of course, its budget, spending that smartly. And according to research commissioned by the Wisconsin State Department of Tourism, Funds allocated to tourism marketing have a seven to one return on investment. So where do we get that money? Well, we get most of it from room tax. Room tax is collected from overnight visitors staying in a lodging property. So remember, the tourist that comes here and stays in a hotel is actually the person paying the room tax. Proper use of room tax dollars includes, and this is according to the Wisconsin State Room Tax Statute, marketing, advertising, and public relations initiatives to attract overnight stays to the area, fundings, wages, and salaries for official tourism entity staff whose primary focus is tourism marketing, and providing infrastructure necessary to attract and service overnight visitors. This is the pr proper use of 100% room tax. Obviously, the 70% uh, of room tax funded by the city of Sheboygan that comes to our department is concentrated on the top two, and down here is this is would an example would be of our, of course our Blue Harbor Conference Center. So now what the room tax statute 
also recommends as improper use of room tax are such things as local parades, fireworks, concerts, and events, economic development fund that's primarily promoting local industrial and corporate development, infrastructure projects primarily used for local residents rather than tourists, Main Street historical or other organizations or events primarily serving local businesses and residents other than attracting tourists to such things, and school universities, charitable or organizations, or scholarships. Also, area guides that do not primarily promote tourism or any marketing collateral, really, that doesn't primarily promote tourism. So now we know how the budget's gathered. This is what it looks like now. <coughs> One of, since we don't use any of the room tax dollars towards events, we raise separate funds to run local events and pay for fireworks and all of those things. What you're going to see here are just room tax allocations. And of course, as you can see over the three years trending, 2010, 11, and projected for 12, the city of Sheboygan consistently runs about 86% of that contribution. And the tourism budget, and this is just room tax dollars and government funding, is basically split into two large chunks. There's the administrative costs and the overhead of running it, and then there's what we spend the dollars on for advertising, marketing, PR, and promotion. So you can see between 2010 and 2011, funds allocated toward advertising and marketing increased 69%, and administrative costs increased 10%. And this was a budget adjustment um, as a result of the first marketing plan. And then between 2011 and 2012, room tax dollars allocated toward advertising and marketing will increase another 16%. And some of that is because we're projecting increases, so we're trying to put a lot of the increase that we're projecting toward right back into the investment of marketing. And the administrative costs increased 28%. And of course, between 10 and 11, or 11 and 12, this is after all of the adjustments are made and the allocations of re-embedding tourism into the chamber, getting a good grasp on an overhead equation and what the, those real costs are going to be. Um, the ratio of fluctuations as of, 11, or as of 2012 should level off about right where they are as the full range of services and infrastructure are, are now in place. Um, and just so you know, in the tourism industry, it, this is the 2012 projection. That's where we want it to be. It's very, very normal for costs and marketing and spending to be about 50-50 in CVB budgets or tourism DMO budgets across the country. That's a normal ratio. So that's where we want to be. Amy, if I, if I may ask, because I'm sure it'll come up, what is the reason for the uh, administrative cost to increase uh, between the 2011 and 2012 budgets? Well, a actually, what we'll do is when we go to the next slide, a lot of that's already explained. This is the budget breakdown, the total budget breakdown. So you see the total column, the total tourism income is about 356000 the city's contribution to that is a little, projected to be a little over 304,000 for 2012. Now if we look at the overhead here, the total overhead and the total spending, and we see how they're split across, this 19,000 in overhead, that's a county contribution. 100% of that pays for the county visitor center that the chamber runs. And the cham that has always been run by the county chamber um, and it's a benefit for the county to run that for all of the chambers or all of the tourism destinations in the county. So that center, even, it makes sense for us to pass it through the tourism budget because it's a visitor center, but they ran that even when city tourism wasn't embedded, embedded in it. Um, so basically, because it's a county contribution, the visitor center, if you haven't been there yet, you should because it's new and it's actually really a... a I don't even, much more of an upgrade than it was in our old building. Um, visitors have website access there and access to all the state um, and all of the cities in Sheboygan that pre present uh, area guides, coupons, or any type of tourism promotion are handled through there. Now, the rest of the split, that is really the, where tourism comes in, and that's mostly George and I and the support staff that we have for Oh, HR for accounting, for finances, for IT, um, plus all of the overhead, the building lease, copy or lease, everything that, all the resources that we use to spend money on the marketing. 
this credit at the bottom is a few private funds um, for our Discover Wisconsin show that we've commissioned. We have been filming this all year. Um, it's basically for the city of Sheboygan, but we did wrap into it a few of the other larger county assets, such as Road America, who's also in the show. And so the participants in the show each contributed some dollar to it so they could help offset the cost for us. Um, the tourism department is picking up most of the cost, though, because a lot of that will focus on waterfront activities and the marina and charter fishing and the types of, of recreational activities that don't have, per se, a fund to pull that kind of advertising from. And actually, now we're going to look at some of the marking initiatives that we went through through 2011 and some of the tracking so we can see what worked and what didn't and why. And I'm going to let George go through that with you. Um, well, according from our feedback from the hotels and uh, visitors, uh, just about anyone we could talk to, um, anyone traveling the Sheboygan um, through our website, our social media, those kind of things, we pulled as much feedback as we could. Our most effective forms of communication or promotion for Sheboygan basically came down to our billboards and our radio. Uh, here on the left, or what would be your left, you can uh, see a couple examples of the static billboards we were running through the state to promote uh, Sheboygan. Just click in the middle. <laughs> that one. Um, and in comparison, our print and online advertising, which we had done about equal, uh, contributed to our branding efforts. I didn't deliver any measurable uh, increases in our web traffic. Um, and this is basically how we've been measuring most of our marketing efforts. We pushed everything back to the website, and as we changed the marketing mix throughout, throughout the different target zones, we could tell which had more effect and which were driving people back to our website for more information. Uh, in 2012, the print and online mediums won't target uh, general branding types of messages like you see over here. This is something we ran in Chicago Magazine, um, and we didn't see a lot of a response from it. These, um, which highlighted, say, the niche silent sports, fishing, sailing, the niche, the niche idea magazines, the niche idea print and online, actually uh, gave us a better uh, response. So. But, our print and online efforts um, will go towards uh, intra-specific niche marketing where our radio and our billboard will maintain our branding campaigns. Um, we used a targeted distribution of the publications that we developed in-house, that being our visitor's guide and our peer pleasure magazine. Uh, these delivered uh, feedback very directly from our visitors. We could see uh, statistically both on the website and got a lot of calls in on them as they were being de uh, delivered to different uh, geographic areas. So we knew this was a very effective uh, distribution model and a, a very good product for promotion. <coughs> Additionally, one of our strongest returns we'd, uh, we got was from editorial content. Um, we pushed up the amount of editorial content we were getting in uh, for the city and town of Sheboygan. Um, through uh, familiarization tours with uh, travel writers and culinary writers, uh, direct cr contact with some writers, publications, and producer, uh, producers, uh, which resulted in more stories both in niche publications and in general publications, uh, some that got syndicated and went out across the country. Um, these returned uh, an extreme amount of attention both um, through the print and online vehicles, and we could see the attention coming back to our website. Um, we, got, we saw this uh, both locally and nationwide. All of our promotions, as I said, were directed back to our newly developed website. Um, this website, we put a lot on the back side of the website so we could determine uh, the metrics of who was visiting it, why they were visiting it, what they were looking at, um, basically geographically what locations they were coming from, so that we could see how that attention back to our website correlated with our advertising campaigns as they were being released. Um, the, the website offers a much more robust um, experience to, to a viewer than any type of advertisement could where any um, prospective tourist or traveler to the area can basically check out their areas of interest. So this has become a really nice vehicle to push people back to and also gives us a, a nice way to measure all different types of marketing. And here you can see some of the measurements and how we're using them. Uh, this is a week-to-week -week, uh, follow through uh, 
about the beginning of April to end of September, um, showing our traffic to the website, both total traffic here in red or new or unique users on a weekly basis as they're coming in. And what we did is overlay those graphs across some of our campaigns. Uh, in the back in the yellow here, you'll see that's one of our billboard campaigns. Um, when we change our material, you can see some spikes. Some of those spikes will correlate to um, different events. Fourth of July, of course, right here. This being the Nation's Cup race that happened in September, we saw a lot more attention just prior to that, and especially as our promotion ramped up into that. Break it down further, our different delivery methods actually went to a number of cities, uh, and I broke down, of course, statewide and beyond regionally. And broken down here are a number of our target cities, Milwaukee, Chicago, Madison, Appleton. Um, we used the different levels that these peaked and spiked uh, to determine which advertising venues were working, because some would be, uh, say, radio was being released statewide, billboards were only in Milwaukee and Chicago, online only in Milwaukee and Madison. You can look through the mix and find out which was giving us our biggest effectiveness. Um, obviously, we were very effective in the Milwaukee mar market. We're seeing continuous growth through the Chicago market. It's an expensive market to get into, so it's easier to, to see some results here, but we're moving that up. Uh, Madison and Appleton. Um, Appleton, you can see a, a very nice spike in growth, and that's as we started radio through the uh, western portion of the state. These again correlate to different uh, advertising changes, which you can see in some events that were marked here. Then again, the big question is what is the advantage to pushing these, um, being as though our department uh, is looking for more and increased room tax and more stays here in Sheboygan? Um, one of the biggest metrics we use is looking at the percentage of uh, web traffic that comes to visitsheboygan.com and essentially then goes outbound to any one of our lodging entities here, um, whether it be hotels, bed and breakfasts, anything where people are going to go and look to stay. Um, what you'll see here is, and it's basically set up for comparison purposes, um, the extended percentage of total web traffic with the percentage of that traffic that then went outbound to our resort, uh, hotels, or bed and breakfast, any of our lodging facilities. So you can see we had what would be a very nice spikes at certain times when promotions were coming out. Otherwise, this rounds pretty consistently with uh, our summer season. We're trying to stretch it out a little bit longer on the back shoulder, and I, I think we're, we're effectively moving that forward. Does anyone have any questions about that or any of the general marketing Amy and I are about? Do you have something? Yeah, I've got one question. Uh, on the uh, <clears throat> current market performance, it says you surveyed the performance of five of Sheboygan stop performing hotels, and that generally showed a 3% increase for the first half of the year and a decrease during the summer. But then were those five hotels countywide as opposed to city of Sheboygan? Because it seems like uh, there's kind of a contradiction between those results and the results on the, uh, the room tax collections right. that increased pretty that's, substantially. That's the difference, actually, because what they're reporting is an increase in occupancy. And you can have a 3% in increase in occupancy, but if it's at a much higher room rate, which leisure, leisure travel brings in a much higher room rate, you'll end up with a larger room tax. What Right. When did when did we move? When did we officially hire you on and move tourism into the chamber? Um, on June first, two thousand ten, we started. Okay, so that would be the difference in our overhead of oh, two thousand ten to a. Yeah, that's that's what I was looking at. Was the overhead cost going way up? That explains it. No, I'm a, so it's uh, been a little over a year, year and a quarter. <clears throat> yeah, I think I think we're doing a great job, and we're definitely heading in the right direction. We have some uh, questions from some aldermen. We have Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Amy. I just wanted to ask you, going back to that consumer behavior page in the blue, and then um, things that were up, and then the things that were down. 
I just looking at the shopping and the sport fees and the evening entertainment, going to the shopping, I recall when one of the first presentations was that shopping was something used to draw you know, tourists here, but now that it's kind of you know, trending downward, are tourists coming here finding you know, shopping adequate and they're just doing other things, or are we always promoting getting well, more shopping here in Sheboygan? Remember, these figures are statewide. So, and we never competed really strongly in, in just as a shopping destination. It's right. never what we right. tried to do. Um, our shopping hasn't really, locally hasn't declined. Okay. And I think that's because we have such unique entrepreneurial shops that people will visit them anyway. They don't come here specifically for that, but they'll engage in the experience. So but a, as an overall trend, this tells us that we don't have to worry about not competing well in shopping because okay say at the outlet malls or the, the larger destinations like Milwaukee, Green Bay, Appleton are huge shopping destinations. Anyway. They're trending down right now. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Jean. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the council? Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Next on our agenda, we have the UW Whitewater survey results. We can have doctors Susan and Jolly come up. They have copies for everybody. And we did review this earlier in uh, strategic fiscal planning, so I think quite a few aldermen are already familiar with it. Um, just so you know, Jolly's passing out some extra copies of the um, report, and when the report is finalized, it, we will present um, bound copies to the council and the city, and then also an electronic copy to put on your website. So um, this is not your only opportunity to uh, see that report, just so you know that, okay? So as the mayor said, um, I am Susan Johnson, and this is my colleague Jolly Emery, and we're up here from UW-Whitewater, the Center for Political Science and Public Policy Research, and we were here in the spring talking about our proposal, and now we're back to present the um, final report. So Jolly is going to begin by going through some of our findings and recommendations in phase one, and then I will come back and talk about the citizen survey and walk through those findings. So I'll turn it over to my colleague, Jolly Emery. Good evening. As Susan said, I'm Jolly Emery. Um, I'm going to talk to you a bit about phase one and summarize our findings. First, um, just to describe for you briefly what phase one of the project was, phase one of the project includes an evaluation of the organizational structure of the city, and based on that evaluation, what we did was come up with recommendations for improvement to the city's structure um, and also with regard to improving delivery of services to um, provide uh, more quality and more efficiency for Sheboygan citizens and visitors. Um, a little bit briefly about our methodology. To complete phase one, we reviewed and analyzed information from a variety of sources. In particular, we conducted um, a number of intervi individual interviews with elected officials, department heads, and we also conducted an employee focus group to gain more input from city staff and employees. If you'd like to know more about this, you can find details about our methodology for phase one in the executive summary on page three of the report, and then also more detail with respect to those interviews on pages 29 through 37 in our report. 
Now, based on the information we gathered and analyzed, we have the following recommendations, which you can also find in the report on pages 42 through 49. And so I'm just going to go over these briefly and also recognizing that you've already put some changes into place, we just learned this evening. Um, and so I'll try to incorporate them so that we appear a little bit more updated. Uh, first, we recommend, based on the current organizational structure, um, even the fact that you have this now chief administrator, we still recommend that you should have uh, an Office of Administrative Services. And within that Office of Administrative Services, you would hold um, or house some key departments, which would include human resources, information technology, and finance and the assessors. Um, we believe that including this or creating this Office of Administrative Services would um, be one way to streamline a number of these key services that many of the city employees and also citizens rely on, and it would uh, make things more efficient for you and improve communication greatly. One of the key issues that we found um, as a concern with all of the stakeholders that we interviewed was communication problems throughout the city from top to bottom and laterally. Um, we also had recommended that you create um, or hire a city administrator, and you've already done this by creating the office of the chief administrator, and we consider that to be um, a move in the right direction. Um, the third, and this is perhaps a bit controversial, is a recommendation that you reduce the size of the Common Council. If you look at Table 41 in the report, you will see that compared with other Class II cities, um, Sheboygan's Common Council is huge. And one of the concerns that was raised by a number of people when we interviewed them was the fact that the Common Council has, and there weren't really key members of the Common Council or older persons identified, but they have a habit of micromanaging. Given that you have gone through redistricting with now eight districts and two older persons per district who essentially overlap in terms of constituents, there's a concern that this could create even less efficiency with respect to responsiveness and greater micromanaging. So that is one of our recommendations. We think that the fact that you've redistricted recently allows for an opportunity to consider um, reducing the size. In addition, along with that, we recommended that you take a look at your standing committees. Again, if you look at table two on page 41, you'll see comparing with other cities, especially cities with larger populations um, that are class two cities, you have an incredible number of standing committees. And when we examined these committees, we noticed that there was a great deal of overlap or redundancy in terms of what some of these committees did. We also noticed that some of these committees don't meet very often. So we suggest that you take a hard look, and these are difficult choices, but take a hard look at these committees and determine what you can do in terms of either consolidating some of their responsibilities or eliminating them altogether. Um, we also took a look at um, some other issues, including changes in uh, the way you provide different services. And you'll find some best practices recommendations on pages 38 through 40 in the report um, under the subheading providing versus producing public services. Although it's not popular, as Susan will report to you, to change um, or increase fees or privatize services with respect to citizen attitudes, this is another area in which the city needs to take a hard look given the deficit that you're facing. Um, one of the most common areas where uh, outsourcing or contracting for services has occurred is in public works, and we understand that your public works department has been reduced greatly in recent um, months. However, the fact of the matter is that um, it's very common throughout the state of Wisconsin and certainly with comparable cities throughout the um, country to contract out things like garbage collection, solid waste disposal, both residential and commercial, recycling, et cetera, without necessarily incurring greater costs for the citizens. So that's something to look at. Um, we were also asked to look at ways to generate revenue 
through fees, um, an examination of other cities comparable in size to Sheboygan within the state and outside the state included things like increasing nominal fees for the use of recreational facilities. I know that you already charge fees, um, different rates, differential rates for residents versus non-residents, but maybe considering increasing these fees slightly just nominally to generate additional revenue. Um, many cities within Wisconsin of comparable size or larger are creating uh, new parking structures, are changing their um, fee structure for parking instead of meter where you could pay, let's say like 20 cents or 30 cents or whatever it is for a half hour leave, there's 20 minutes left, someone else takes that last 20 minutes, you pay a flat rate so every time you pay a full flat rate for using that fee. It's not the most popular thing, but it is one method for generating additional fees. Um, ambulance services are um, something that are also commonly privatized or contracted out by other cities of similar size, et cetera. So there's more detail, as I said, in the report with respect to um, best practices for um, generating more fees or changing services to make things more efficient and more cost effective for the city. Finally, a few things that we recommend that the city take a look at that may not be quite as costly but should be um, looked into fairly soon would include hiring a full-time administrator rather than an interim administrator, I'm, I'm sorry, interim, hiring a full-time assessor rather than having an interim assessor. Um, we suggest that this interim assessor position be replaced soon and um, you could decide whether or not you want to keep the deputy assessor or um, eliminate that position. We also believe that it's very important that the city consider hiring a full-time HR director as soon as possible. Um, I, we think that that would be very helpful to a variety of agencies who could rely on HR to do some of the personnel training that some of um, these different agencies are doing on their own now. HR could fulfill that capacity. And we also think that the city needs to take a hard look at the role of both the Common Council and the mayor in terms of how it meets the, the needs and responds to the needs of the citizens and then, of course, also the other actors um, in the different agencies in the city. And now Susan's going to talk about the survey results. Okay, the survey um, portion of the report begins on page 51, and what I will do is uh, walk you through some of the tables that begin on page 55. But first, um, phase two was a citizen survey. And essentially, there were three goals of the citizen survey. To look at overall quality of life issues in Sheboygan, to do an evaluation of services and facilities in Sheboygan, and then ask people about their um, opinions on making certain changes to service delivery and fee structures and the like. In terms of the methodology, the survey was mailed to 2,000 households in um, the end of July, mid-July 2011, with postage paid. And we received back, they were sent out from the city, but they came back to our center in Whitewater, Wisconsin, and we received 563 surveys back. So we had a response rate of over 25%, which is a very high response rate. So um, people not familiar with surveys might think that's not that high, but that's actually exceptionally high for a survey to get 25% of the people who receive it to actually send it back. The survey included 18 questions. Some of them had, had sub-questions. Two of them were open-ended and the remainder were closed questions. And so, as I mentioned, there were three different focus. There were three three different focuses, and um, the tables begin on page 55. The first broad focus was overall quality of life, and so as you can see in table three, uh, the people who received the survey were asked to evaluate Sheboygan as a place to live, their neighborhood as a place to live, raise children, retire and the overall quality of life. And what we found generally, people who live in Sheboygan who responded to the survey evaluated Sheboygan very positively. So 71% of people said that the overall quality of life was either uh, excellent or good. When we looked at Sheboygan as a place to live, that same percent said excellent or good. The neighborhood ranked um, even higher than that. So overall, in general, when we asked these questions, only one item, and that was 
as a place to retire, did the rating of poor, you know, go into the double digits. So overall, in general, there was positive responses. We also asked people to evaluate Sheboygan over the past five years. Not only Sheboygan the city, but also their own neighborhood. And that's table four. And what we found there was that two-thirds of respondents to the survey said that their neighborhood either improved or stayed the same. That number was, was less for the whole city. So about 58% of people said that the city had worsened over the past five years. So um, in terms of change, people thought their neighborhoods were better, but maybe the, the city environment as a whole, not so much. Okay. And then table five was the third question in this, quali in this um, overall quality of life grouping that we did. And that was an open-ended question. And it asked people to tell us what, they, what changes they would like to see in Sheboygan. And the number one reported issue was redu reduction in crime. And so there were lots of comments about drugs and gangs and other sorts of issues related to crime. And so 17% of people who wrote something down um, wrote down something related to crime. The, uh, the other big category was road repair and maintenance issues. So a lot of people indicated that that was a, an area of concern, something they would like to see changed. And then the other things that people wrote down on their surveys had to do with taxes and fees, um, improving the residential areas, and greater um, economic development. Okay, so the other category was um, a, a collection of many different things, and we listed some of those on the uh, right below table number five. So overall, when we look at this overall evaluation of the overall quality of life, people generally responded positively. There were some areas that they thought needed improvement, and when offered the opportunity to write down things they were concerned about most, things like crime, taxes, uh, road repairs, and the like, or what came up. The second area or area of focus was an evaluation of cities, the city services and facilities, and that's in table six. And so we um, had a list of 23 different services and facilities, and we asked people to rate them as excellent, good, fair, or poor. And what we found was that um, a group of about seven had, you know, ratings that were 70, over 70% 70 so of either good or excellent. So fire service rated the highest, 87% of respondents said that the fire services in, in town were good or excellent. Garbage collection, drinking water, the library, sewers, the ambulance EMS services, the police, recycling, and the appearance and maintenance of parks were the highest scorers. Um, on the other hand, the services that received the greatest percent of fair or poor were street maintenance, 81% said fair or poor. If you recall back to table number five, that was one of the biggest things that people talked about in terms of what they'd like to see changed was road maintenance and road repair. So that those two go together. Local economic activity, 63% rated that, fair or poor, and sidewalk maintenance, 59% indicated that um, that was fair or poor. Okay, other things that had a little lower ratings in terms of um, support, building and housing code enforcement, snow removal, youth services, traffic enforcement, street lighting, and storm drainage. But overall, if you looked at all of the services, I mean, there were fairly good marks for the services and facilities in Sheboygan. And then the third focus of the, of the survey ties up really well with phase one of our evaluation. And that asked people about their support for privatizing and or contracting with outside vendors for selected city services. And that's gonna be table seven. And then table eight, which we'll get to in a second, it allowed feedback for what other services people might be willing to see privatized or have a fee charged for. And the third thing had to do with other cost savings or revenue generating policies. But first, Table seven was a selection of six items that we were asked to ask residents of Sheboygan about in regard to their support for privatizing and or contracting with an outside vendor for select services. And there was very little support, honestly, for um, 
privatizing or contracting with outside vendors. The um, item that received the greatest support was inspections and then park maintenance and services to seniors and recycling were all very bunched together very, um, very closely. Garbage collection and snow removal were the ones that had the least, the least support. And these responses, they track really consistently with the open-ended responses that are found on table eight. You can all see that the number one response to what else might you want to see privatized is nothing. Okay, so 42% of people who responded to that question said they'd like to see no services privatized or be a fee-for-service type operation. Of the items that people actually wrote down, okay, ambulance was one, parks and park maintenance, fire and public safety, and then you can see as the list, uh, as the list goes, goes down. Table nine looks at three specific proposals for generating additional revenue or reducing costs. And the first question asked people about combining city and county emergency dispatch service. And you can see there was strong support for that. So 40%, um, 30, 39% strongly agreed and 45% agreed with the idea of combining city and county emergency dispatch. The other two items, a stormwater fee with, with the revenue segregated and used for sewer repairs and upgrades did not have a lot of support. And then a wheel tax with, um, with the fee segregated and used only for maintenance and street repairs also had um, support of 41%, so less than half. The interesting thing that bears comment in regard to the wheel tax is that several people wrote on their survey, we already pay a wheel tax, and we understand that the county charges the wheel tax, and we also understand that Sheboygan, the city, used to charge a wheel tax. So there's some confusion there amongst the residents in the city in regard to that issue of, of the wheel tax, and we think that that's something that needs to be clarified for people because this is, a, this is one of the areas where we see the council may have some opportunities because 40%, like it's 41% either agreed or strongly agreed with this idea of charging the fee. And um, as we recall from earlier, road repairs was the biggest concern for people, the issues of the quality of the roads. And so 81% of people said that the, the roads were in poor shape. When we asked people, what do you want to see changed? They said, fix the roads. And so we, we think that there's somewhere for, this, for the council, the city, to move in that regard if, as, you're looking to, um, as you're looking at areas to generate revenue that revisiting this idea of the wheel tax might be somewhere, something that you can revisit and uh, um, perhaps implement again, making the very strong connection, letting people know that by doing this, the money is going to go directly to deal with the issue of the roads because people want to see their, their streets repaired and uh, the roads in better conditions. The other area where we think there's um, the, the interest is obviously combining the city and county emergency dispatch service. And uh, that was something that received very strong support. So those are two areas that we think the city can, can look at. In general, um, at, by way of conclusion, the people who completed the survey evaluated Sheboygan favorably. With only a few exceptions, they evaluated the city's services and uh, facilities positively. As we said, when we looked at those last few tables, there, there's not across the board support for privatization or outsourcing or charging fees, but there are areas where we believe that the city can look that it, it would get at least a, uh, a certain level of support from the residents should they go in those directions. We also think that it's important for the council to educate its constituents on the need to generate revenue. And, um, and, I, and, and that being the case, um, clarifying issues in regard to the wheel tax, for example, and letting them know that the city does not charge a wheel tax. And um, perhaps that would then allow for the conversation to begin, which then you could you know, explain to residents that if we charge a wheel tax and it was segregated, the fees only going to repair roads, people might be willing to um, go along with that. So um, that's all that we, ha we have for our report, but we're definitely willing to Set questions. Okay, thank you, Susan. Um, any questions from the council? I believe that uh, um, Jim, will this be on our city website, or Chad, will we be posting this on the city website in the next couple days? Not right away. They're going to be. There's a 
comment period and they're going to make any corrections or changes. You are going to make yeah, some changes. They, we will take some feedback and then I, I told him I would add a, the table, a table that he requested and then we'll send you a final copy PDF and then you can put it on the website. Okay, and the final copy will be within 30 couple days weeks. or yep. a couple weeks? Okay, so it'll be a couple weeks it'll be on the website. Questions from the council and thank you, Alderman Hammond. Any questions? Comments? Compliments? Concerns? Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I'm just going to repeat a comment that I did at Strategic Fiscal Planning. I think it's kind of interesting, uh, at least I found it interesting, is that when we were going through the, the folks from Whitewater and we were asking on Table 7 your level of support for privatizing and or contracting with outside vendors for selected city services, there's a list of six of them there, and one that I wanted included on there in the survey was the idea of outsourcing or privatizing the ambulance service. Well, in the committee, I was voted down on that because the reason I was given that, that, well, the reason was given that was voted down was because we had just had a referendum on the ambulance service and the city had said that they wanted to continue with the fire department running the ambulance service. However, when you go over to table eight under ambulance, without even having that as a prior choice of the six, we still had 13% of the citizens that returned surveys that said they would be in favor of privatizing or charging a fee for the service. So I guess my point is, had that been included, if we would have had another choice on table seven of what the people could have evaluated to privatize or outsource, it was not a choice on that one, but yet people took the initiative on the survey to write that they were in favor of uh, privatizing or charging a fee for ambulance service. So I just wanted to point that out. It's kind of, I thought it was kind of interesting that that many people took the initiative to write that without having that as even a choice on table seven. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Any other questions or comments? Okay, the thing that uh, stands out uh, in my opinion on this survey is that uh, we really need to get our roads repaired in this city. That's what this says to me, is the most glaring um, deficiency that we have in the city. It seems overall, uh, people are satisfied with their neighborhoods, they're satisfied with the quality of life in our city, uh, but let's face it, our roads stink, and I think that's something that this council uh, needs to address. Thank you again. Thanks. Okay. Um, we will move on in the agenda to the election of a new vice president of the council. President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by closed ballot, and if any more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until candidate receives a majority. Second. We have a second. Nominations uh, will now be received from the floor. Are there any nominations? Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to nominate Alderman Don Hammond for the position of Vice President of the Council. I believe his leadership and experience here on the Council would serve him well in that position, and I think he would do a great job for us. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. We have a motion for Alderman Hammond. Second. And a second. Are there any other nominations from the floor? Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I would uh, like to nominate uh, Alderman Scott Versey of the First District for the Office of Vice President. Uh, uh, I think uh, Alderman Versey, first of all, would have the, uh, not that he's not busy with his family and his occupations, but I think uh, uh, Alderman Versey would, first of all, have the time to uh, dedicate uh, to the Office of Vice President. And I think his, uh, his background, as of Alderman Hammond, has somewhat of a financial background, which <laughs> with our budget times right now is important. So I would recommend Alderman Versey for Vice President. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second for Alderman Versey. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? If there are no other nominations, President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the nominations be closed. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the nominations. All in favor of closing, say aye. 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 
Opposed? Nominations are closed. Okay, uh, we will do the uh, balloting. Uh, it'll be a majority vote. We have Alderman Hammond and Alderman Versi on the ballot. And Attorney McLean will make sure nobody's putting in two ballots. Alderman, would you please print your last name on the ballot and then sign it and then put on who you're voting for, please? Are all the ballots in? Okay, we 
don't have a tie vote, which is good. You lose. I lose. You lose. We have a winner, uh, the new vice president of the City of Sheboygan Common Council will be Alderman Hammond. Congratulations, Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Election on to the mayor's announcements. Um, I don't have much this evening. Um, we have a new council president in uh, President Decker and a new council vice president in Vice President Hammond. Um, looking forward to it. Uh, it's a, a new start for the council. I'm looking forward for, to these two gentlemen um, to lead this council to give this council direction um, to move this city forward and to hopefully uh, continue with the business of the city. As we learned from our survey, um, which we just got the initial review on, uh, we have some challenges facing us. The, ov the overall people in Sheboygan like it here. And it seems, from what I interpret of this, uh, just reviewing it two times quickly, um, that people like their neighborhoods, um, but overall view the city um, less favorably than their own neighborhood. But this survey was handed out to all neighborhoods in the city. So if people view their, where they live as a better place than the city overall, um, why is that? And uh, I think we need to answer that question. You know, why, why is that? If people say, yeah, I love my neighborhood, but sit, the city overall is not as good as my neighborhood. Uh, we, we polled every neighborhood in the city. So I think that's something we have to ask ourselves. Um, we have a lot of work to do in the city. I think we're making progress, um, but we have a lot of challenges ahead of us. And uh, I uh, urge the council to come together. Now's the time. Come together, move the city forward. Uh, the business of this council is the business of our city. That's what we need to concentrate on. So I'd like to congratulate President Decker on becoming the president of the council. Look forward to working with you. Uh, look forward to you providing leadership and Vice President Hammond, same thing. Looking forward to the future. Um, this is uh, October. Uh, we don't have elections on this council until April. It gives us a lot of time to make up a lot of ground. Looking forward to the future and congratulations. Moving on to the consent agenda. Oh, one other. Uh, Small item. We do have a vacancy that has opened up <laughs> in the city uh, for District 5, which uh, I don't know what District 5 will be called in the future, but the seat of, uh, the seat of uh, former President Rinfleisch, Alderman Rinfleisch, is now open. Uh, we will uh, be taking uh, letters of intent for people to occupy that seat. Uh, they are to be addressed to the city clerk's office, to our city clerk, Sue Richards. We will have a, this, you know, this is the way to campaign if you, if you don't uh, have a lot of time on your hands. Um, we will have uh, speeches limited to five minutes at the next council meeting, which is in three weeks. That would be November 7th, I think. November 7th, we think. Um, the first, uh, <laughs> first Monday in November, uh, five minutes um, to, uh, uh, tell the council why uh, you want to assume that uh, the duties of aldermen in that uh, in that district, and then the council will vote on it at that point. So anybody who is interested, please give a letter of intent to City Clerk Sue Richards. You have three weeks to uh, uh, sharpen up your uh, speech, and uh, we will make that decision the first Monday of November. That's all I have. Thank you. Moving on to the consent agenda, 14-1 through 1414, President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file. 
all RCs be accepted and adopted. And all resolutions, ordinances, and substitute ordinances be put upon their passage. Second. We have a motion and a second on the consent agenda under discussion. There's no discussion. Roll call, please. Belt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Matichak. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Versi. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of officers 2, 1415 through 1423 to be referred. Resolutions introduce three, 1424 by Alderman Raisler, accepting the agreements with local 483 of the IAFF for 2012-2013 and 2014-2015 in authorizing the collective bargaining committee and the chairman of the committee on salary and grievances to sign the agreement. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Boren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Matichek. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. And Belt. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1425 by Alder Persons Belt and Decker confirming the exercise of police power and making an assessment for a benefited property against which an assessment is proposed for the water lateral replacement at 1502, 1502A South 13th Street. Alderman Belt. I'd like to have a resolution put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Your Honor, I just have a question for the city clerk. Steve. As to whether she got a signed copy of the waiver. Um, yes, I, believe. I thought it was in there. I don't have it on the document. We will get it before we enact this resolution. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, we should have a waiver of the yep. of the hearing prior to uh, this change in the assessment would normally require a public hearing. Uh, I believe the water utility was making contact with these uh, the fishers uh, as far as getting a waiver. Um, that really should be part of the record before you uh, act on the resolution without having a hearing. Should we put this on hold till the next council meeting? Um, to make a contingency as part of the part of the amendment the that if we passed upon the Why don't we reception do it, of that. Make a contingent on uh, there I'd being a waiver I'd because I, I believe they want to get this. Uh, move for a friendly amendment. Larger lateral in. Second. <laughs> okay, Alderman Belt, you good with that? Uh, with the amendment that it's contingent upon receiving the signed waiver. Yes, I am. Okay, we have a motion and a second uh, to uh, pass the resolution as amended. Under discussion? If there's no discussion, roll call please. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. <coughs> 1426 to be referred. Reports of committees 6, 1427 through 1431 to be referred. Reports of committees 7, 1432 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 9295 based upon the applicant's failure to accurately, accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application and his record of violations related to the licensed activity. Alderperson Vanderweel. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Is Jerry Sonneman here tonight? He's not here. Please continue. Um, he was, his license was de denied four to zero um, based on recent violations, including encouraging probation and parole violations. And there was a concern from the police department. 
Thank you, Alderperson Vanderweel. Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1433 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 9294 based upon her failure to accur accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her application and her record of violations related to the licensed activity. Once again, Alderperson Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Is Monica Torres here tonight? She is here. Uh, the reason she was denied her license uh, was there was repeated disorderly conducts from 2005 to 2009, actually six of them, and repeat driving without a license. There were three of them between 2005 and 2007, and the police department had concerns about her continued disregard to, um, to the law. Thank you, Alderperson Vanderbilt. Ms. Torres, would you like to speak on this issue? I, I would like to speak on this. Okay, and you are? We have a motion to open the floor to her manager. So we'll open the floor to her manager. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of opening the floor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Please step up, ma'am. Okay, first we need your name. Melody Kraniak. Melody. With Q Mark. Which one? Kmart 201 on South A Street. 201. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi. Um, I've been with the company for 25 years, and I don't think many of you have seen me up here. I think I've been up here once in that time. I'm kind of a good judgment of character. I understand Monica had some problems in the past. She's been coming in my store for a year now. She didn't apply. I asked her to work for me. A lot of reason is we have a big ethnic area down there and she seems to be well in the community. She's been coming in for a year now. So I know she's settled down in the neighborhood. She's been living in the same place for a year. And I don't know, she comes off as a good person to me. She's a hard worker. She wants to work a lot and she's gonna be bridging a big gap for me. I have a lot of Hispanic people who don't speak English and she's already helped me greatly with one man. It's, it's good for the community down there. I don't know who is the alderman in that neighborhood. It's kind of rough in the A Street where by rehab, a lot of fighting. The people seem to respect us though. Um, like we're family, we're a neighborhood, we're... I think it would be a good thing to bring her in to our store. She's a good lady, she's trying to get her life together. I didn't know her except for as a customer. You know, we're not, I don't even live near her. I got a good vibe, and I just wanted you guys to give her a chance. Most of my people work for me years, and I haven't had no problems, or you guys see me more often up here. I don't think I've been here once in eight, in, I think eight years ago. So I just wish you could reconsider and just see what I see. Thank you. Uh, thank you. If you can remain up here for a moment, if we have any questions from Alderman. Uh, can I ask how long has she worked for you right now? She just started. Um, okay. She just started. She had her temps. All right. Yeah. Alderperson Kath. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Um, thank you for coming, Melanie. Um, Monica has come before our committee. Uh, she had mentioned that she's worked for you for three months. However, um, she's had a disorderly conduct in 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009. And um, there's a, a negative recommendation from the police department that does weigh heavily on our committee. And it was a four to zero vote to no, not to give her the license. Thank you. Thank you, Alderperson Kath, Alderman Boren. Thank you. Uh, was, the, was the vote of the committee unanimous? Yes. Uh, but the, from what I heard from Alderperson Cott that the last violation was in 2009, mm -hmm. I'd like to hear from her, if possible, what she's been doing the last couple of years to stay out of trouble before I'd vote. Would you, please? Would you like me to sit 
Oh, well, you can hang out up here for a while too, please. Okay. Well, I actually am a single mother of three kids and I'm raising a niece. I've been staying out of trouble. I know what I did was wrong. It's disorderly conduct. Everybody makes mistakes, but I really need a job and it's hard for me. And I'm doing my best to do whatever I can. No troubles, no, none of that. I'm always home when my kids are not at work. And I really need this job. It's hard out there. Answer your question, Alderman Bourne. Thank you. Any further questions? Alder Person Kittleson, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. How many hours? You're working at the store now at the yes. Q Mart? And you work how well, many? Well, I haven't since my license. license was denied, but okay. I'll do 20 plus hours a week. And, and yeah. she helped out at other stores too? Yeah. And she helped like out the where? Weeding, she helped out at the Weeding Creek store. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And your, la her, your last disorderly conduct was 2009? Yes. 2009. So you've been out of trouble since that yes, time, and yes. you're working hard to. Yes. To. See. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alder Person Kittleson. Any further questions, Alderman Raisler? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I, I may have uh, asked this before, but is there any way that we can do an extension on the temporary for a period of time? No. Okay. Not by state law. I, I I wouldn't mind if you wanted to do that. You can't, I don't need that. You can't, you can't do, do a provisional. You can, but longer than sixty days hmm. by okay. statute. And I, and I guess, Melanie, I'm just looking uh, for your support if there are any uh, problems and stuff like that. Um, I'm assuming that you would take care of any issues that uh, would come about as far as employment and such. You know it. Okay. I stand by it. <laughs> uh, are you the license holder of the establishment? I am, yes. You are. So anything that would uh, go wrong goes right uh, back at me. Goes and right back at you. And I am a bit familiar with your yeah. industry. <laughs> so if she gets in trouble, I get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I won't let that happen. No. <laughs> Alder Person Kath, please. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, you have a pending charge at this time? Correct. Actually, it's my dog ended up leaving the door, which I'm still going to court for that. Okay, okay thank you. What is the... I had, uh, excuse me? Uh, 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 your pending charges are what? Um, my dog actually, well, I'm fighting it with another, dog. with another dog. Okay. Yes. Well, that's... Okay. Yeah. So your dog was on the loose or something? Yeah, inside the house, open the screen. And, oh, okay. Yeah. Any further questions? Okay, you may sit down. Thank you, okay. ladies. Thank you. Okay, if there is no further discussion, um, <clears throat> the recommendation of committee is to deny, and I vote will deny the license. Roll call, please. Heidemann? No. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? No. Matichek? No. Raisler? No. Sampson? No. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Belt? No. Boren? No. Carlson? No. Decker? No. And Hammond? No. Two eyes and 12 no's. Okay, motion fails. Do we have a motion to approve the license? Alderman Raisler? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll, I'll move to approve the license. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the license and a third. Under discussion? If there is no discussion, um, an I vote will approve the license, a no vote will deny. Roll call, please. Give me a second here. Okay, this is to approve the license. Koth? No. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 no. License is approved. If Ma'am, if you can uh, uh, consult with the city clerk tomorrow, she will take care of everything. Thank you, ladies. Moving on, 1434 by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 9320 based upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application and his record of violations related to the licensed activity. All to person Vanderweel. Thank you. Um, I, ask, I make motion that the RC be accepted and adapted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adapt under discussion. Is Marcelo 
Segovia here. He is here. Please continue. Um, the, his license was de denied four to zero. He had three disorderly conducts between 2003 and 2008. Um, I think what the committee's main concern was here is that um, we asked for background on any of them and he wasn't able to recall any of them to give us any kind of a background. So we were a little concerned <clears throat> about that. Was not able to recall the <coughs> circumstances of the disorderly right. conducts? We, we got no background at all. Okay. Sir, would you like to speak on this issue? Please come forward. Alderman Vanderweel, can you give me his name again? It's Mar Mars. M-A-R-C-E-L-L-O, Segovia. Segovia, okay. Go ahead. Uh, um, I, re I didn't get a chance to look it up. I really don't know what happened. No, it's just some of the conducts, but I do got a letter from my manager. Um, okay, um, sir, you, you received disorderly conducts in how many of them? Three of them. Three of them, and you don't recall no, I don't. what the incidents were? Okay. Um, I didn't get a chance to look that stuff up. Were these disorderly conducts in the state of Wisconsin? Okay. Uh, questions from the. These were in, in the years 2003, 2007, and 2008. Um, they're the only things on your record, um, except for a operating motor vehicle without owner's consent back in 2003. You don't know the circumstances that these disorderly contacts would have arised out of? No, I don't, I don't remember, I really don't remember. Okay. It's just too far back for me to remember any of that. Um, is there any questions from the council? Alderman Boren? Thank you. Uh, sir, where are you going to be working with your license? Uh, the Mad Max convenience store on 14th in Illinois. Or, okay, I know where that is. Okay. The Mad Max on, for, oh. is that 14th and Illinois? Illinois. Illinois. Okay, 14th in Illinois. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. So you're going to be working at Mad Max on 14th and Illinois. How, are you? You're not working there now, or I, I am. You're, I you am. don't have. An, I don't have my pending license. approval of this license. How long? It, how uh, you've had a good relationship with the manager and with the yes. people who work there. Yes. No trouble at all. None at all. None at all. I'm just trying to keep a job so I can support my kids and take care of them. Do you live in that area at all? Or yes. You do, okay, all right. And this is your only, your only job, will be your only job and your only means of support? Um, I would love to keep this job and actually get another job and uh, working somewhere else. And you have been in no trouble since these three disorderly conducts? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, do you remember if you got a citation? Did you go to jail? Did anything, do you remember anything about the events? It's been a long time. I try to forget about all that and I don't remember at all. Okay, uh, I guess I'm just trying to a question about a comment. If, if, if you are denied tonight, I think it would be in your best interest to go to the police department get to the or cops. go to uh, yeah. Wisconsin Circuit Court Access to see where they are from. You can actually go and get an open records request and get a copy of the report so you have the knowledge to talk okay. a little bit, maybe refresh your memory too. Okay. Okay? Yes. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Alderman Bourne, once again. Thank you. Uh, I want to give this gentleman, uh, you know, every benefit of the doubt possible. Would it be, would it work if we would send this back to the committee and in the meantime, have the gentleman do what Alderman Raisler suggested and then bring those reports back to the committee and then bring this back again in a couple of weeks? Uh, I think that would, in my mind, at least clear up, uh, you know, what what the disorderly conducts involved and that type of thing. Okay. I want to give you every chance, and I think at least that would uh, clear it up in my mind if you could do what Alderman Raisler said and, and then bring that back to the committee. So, I would make a motion to uh, send this back to Law and Licensing. Second. Do we have a motion and a second to send it back to Law and Licensing? Uh, Alderperson Kath, would you like to speak on something other than that? 
Yes. Okay, please do. And then, then the discussion will be on sending it back to law and licensing. Please, all okay. the person cost. Thank you, Mayor. Um, law and licensing met two weeks ago. So actually, Marcella had two weeks to find out what <coughs> the disorder of the conduct was in 2003, 2007, and 2008. Uh, it was unanimous at law and licensing, uh, four zero vote, only because you did not cooperate with the committee two weeks ago. Now would have been another time to cooperate with the council. So I, I don't know if it would be worthwhile to meet um, next week. Thank you, Alder. Did this gentleman show up to committee? Yes. yes. But he didn't recall then what the... Can't remember. Okay. Um, did the committee recommend at that time that he looked up what... Those were? Mm -hmm. Alderperson Kittleson? Thank you, Mayor. Did the, did the our, um, being right there at the police station, was he able to look anything up there or any get any help looking anything up? We meet here. Oh, you meet here. Yeah, I'm the meetings sorry. are here. Yeah. Never mind. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson. Uh, if there are no more questions for this gentleman, sir, you can mm -hmm. sit down. Thank you. Okay, we have a, a motion uh, to refer back to committee. A motion and a second. Uh, any other, any further discussion on sending back to committee? If there is none, uh, we will take a vote and I vote will send back to committee. Heidemann? No. Koth? No. Kittleson? No. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Versi? No. Belt? No. Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? No. And Hammond? Aye. Five ayes, nine noes. Uh, motion fails. We had a motion on the, and a second on the floor um, to accept and adopt um, the RO. Is there any further discussion on that? Yes. Can you just clarify? We're voting now to deny him the license. Yes, uh, accept and adopt the, uh, yes. And, and to deny. So an I vote would be to deny the license. An I vote would be to deny. Thank you. Thanks. Under discussion? There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? No. Matichak? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Hammond? No. 12 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries, sir. Uh, your license is denied. I would recommend that you try to find out about these disorderly conducts and possibly reapply in the future. That would be a good place to start, yes, sir. Thank you. Ordinance is introduced 10, 1437, and 1430, uh -huh. 1443, 14. No. <laughs> 1435 through 40, 37 and 1443. Okay, 1435 through 37 and 43. Right. Oh, a little, little, little order problems here, Sue. I That's know. why it says yes, it is out of order. Yes, yeah, Dad. Okay, those all lie over. Um, 1438 lies over to December 5th. Scary. 1439 through 1442 to be referred. 1338, matters late over 11, RO number 212-1112 by the city clerk granting various licenses. President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and place on file. Under discussion? If there is no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Excuse me. Other matters authorized by law, 1444, NRC by the Committee of the Whole, making a favorable recommendation on adopting the Shukert Farms, soon to be known as the Willow Creek Park Conservation Plan, to protect important resources on the site, while at the same time providing development opportunities to promote job creation goals 
of the City of Sheboygan. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. There's no discussion. I'd like to just comment on this uh, briefly. Um, this was a study that was done, uh, sponsored by the DNR. Uh, we got a $40,000 grant on this to uh, uh, kind of marry together uh, uh, economic development and uh, natural preservation of the resources on this property. So it's a, uh, luckily, um, we uh, did not find any endangered species, no three-eyed newts or anything out here, so we are going to be able to develop it, but the idea is to uh, conserve or preserve a great portion of this property to be turned over as conservation land in the future. So uh, we appreciate the work of uh, Chad Pelashek that he put together on this, and uh, um, I believe it was Grafe that did the study, so it turned out well. Thank you. Any uh, discussion on this matter? There's no discussion. Roll call, please. Huth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sanson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Belt? Aye. Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. Attorney McLean? Thank you, Your Honor. 1445 is communication from Kristen Blanchard regarding the various concerns and complaints she has received from customers and vendors about the past farmer's market season. We'll be referred to Public Works. And 1446 is by an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2012 and June 30, 2013. We'll be referred to Law and Licensing. Anybody have anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn in a second. Under discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everybody.